here's what they claim. First, talk about how good God is. Make demonstrations about God's goodness. Show people that God is good. Then focus yourself on the blessings you have already received from God. And then, and, and this is really important, be sure to give your money to the church. Not to charity, not to anyone else, but to the church, the church you belong to, to the preacher who's telling you all this stuff. This is the heart of prosperity theology. If you do all of these things, you'll be prosperous. You'll be successful. You'll have more good things in your life. Focus on things, more good things in your life than you can imagine because God loves you and wants you to have good things. This idea of prosperity theology, it's prevalent in Christianity and in evangelical Christianity, but it's also found in forms of New Age spirituality and, and other places, and it's really very dangerous. I want to talk about prosperity theology today, as well as how it's fundamentally contrary to the teachings of Jesus. When you run into it in Christianity, and it's prevalent in Christianity, it's really not Christian. As I talk about this, be sure to subscribe to this channel and like the video so you're notified of future videos. Prosperity theology grew up in the 1950s, and it's based on the American false belief that if you work hard, you will succeed. Now, there are lots of poor people in the United States, lots of poor people around the world who work very, very hard. You know, typically, poor people work a lot harder than rich people. That's the truth we don't hear. I know several people who are working two and three jobs, who are in the service industry. They, they are not making enough money to pay the rent. They don't have warm clothes for the winter. They have a hard life, even though they work very, very hard. And yes, they're people of faith and they want good in the world. But in the 1950s, Oral Roberts came up with this idea of prosperity theology. And it's been echoed by people like Billy Graham, Joel Olstein, and Rick Warren. But it's not just the big televangelists that have this prosperity theology going for them. As I mentioned, we find it in things like The Secret or in ideas about uh, the law of attraction and all kinds of other popular spiritualities. And it's dangerous. It has shown up in African-American churches and Latino churches. It's often pushed on poor people as a way to get them to sort of kick in and disregard their, their state. And it's dangerous because it really works. Well, it's, I think, fraud, really, because it's really taking people's money because that's what they want. They want you to give your money, at least 10% of it, to the church, and those churches in turn can spend large and lavishly but it's contrary to the teachings of Jesus when you find it in Christianity. It is totally unchristian. Remember what Jesus said to the rich man in Matthew 19. Rich man comes up and says, I wanna be your follower, what do I have to do? And Jesus says, sell everything you have and give the money to the poor, then come and follow me. And the rich man walked away very sad because he had a lot of stuff and he didn't want to part with it. Jesus also said in Matthew 6, Don't store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves can steal. Instead, store up for yourself treasures in the realm of heaven. Jesus' life was a simple life. He asked his followers to focus on simple things in life, to consider the lilies of the field, to consider that the grass of the field, it comes and it goes, but it's beautiful. Jesus lived that simple life and he involved, invited his followers to do the same, to not get caught up in ownership of things 
being successful and making money. Jesus' early followers understood this. We read in the Acts of the Apostles that the early followers of Jesus sold all that they had, put the money in a common treasury, a common pot, and took care of each other. They practice socialism, and that's surely not what people in America want to hear. They don't want to hear that Jesus' followers were socialist. But no, we have this understanding in America that working hard brings success, and this theology is all about your success, but it's not about the teachings of Jesus. The writer of the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, was very clear. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. What marks the followers of Jesus? Jesus is very clear about this. Feed the hungry. Give a drink to someone who's thirsty. Visit people in prison. Care for the sick. Do things for other people. Do what you can to make life better for others. And when you do, then you're leading the good life. Then you're leading the life of promise. That is the blessing. The blessing, the abundance is found in sharing with others, not because you're going to get goodies at the end of it, but because that's what's leading a whole and fruitful life. That's what it's all about. Unfortunately, prosperity theology is being marketed around the world, and it's fundamentally not Christian. But here's what you can do. Whatever your spiritual path is, focus on what is life-giving. And what's life-giving is our engagement with others, caring for others, being a presence of love, of kindness, of compassion. All the great traditions of the world teach us that. And that's how we bring change and hope and life and goodness into the world. It was the same in Jesus' day as it's true for us today. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, and leave me some comments. And thanks for your time with Spirituality Beyond Borders. Have a really great day.